What are we starting with this a week? Patreon. An apology something. from you. Oh. Why? For spreading fake news. Oh yes. Let's not talk about this Over until a year we. Ago. No, let's not. Footballs talk. are not made of pentagons. Corey. Oh that. Jeez Louise. Footballs yeah. are made of pentagons and hexagons. Yeah Both yeah yeah. You spread fake yeah. news. Oh gosh. Oh no. What if YouTube takes down our video for misinformation? Mm -hmm. I, I Every hexagon do. has an adjacent pentagon. Oh, well. What is interesting is that we we have given out misinformation about the mm -hmm. construction of footballs, but we've yes. given it out to many people on Spotify. Can you guess how many people on Spotify? Nineteen thousand three hundred and twenty-seven. Whoa, Luke, can you get any closer? Nineteen thousand five hundred. That was closer. It's oh. actually twenty thousand three hundred and sixty-one. Oh my god! It goes up so quickly. Oh no, we got to that twenty k pretty quick, didn't we? Wow. That is so cool. quick. I did not expect it to be that quick. Why don't we try and get it to twenty-two k next time, huh? That's 20, the challenge. That, that is too quick. So everyone that's listening, if you all tell a friend... That would have overtaken YouTube if we do that. Oh. Yeah. Well, then YouTube... It's a race between YouTube and Spotify right now, then. Damn. Subscribe on both, and everyone wins. <laughs> we, Mainly we us. Win. Yeah, we win the most. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, we all win, because yeah. everybody gets some lovely content. Anyway, why don't we start the show after I ask a question. Mm -hmm. Did you dress up for Halloween? Let us know what you dressed up as, or what you're dressing up as. It's, the, it's Halloween today. When this oh, comes out. is it? Oh, yeah. cool. That's very good. Yeah, but if you're listening, it's the day after Halloween. But you could have heard it on Halloween if you watch on YouTube. I don't know. I'm looking at the camera. They're listening. They can't. They can't see this. <laughs> Shall we start the show? No. Let's you, start the show. I apologized. Oh, I said I'm sorry, didn't I? Oh, no. Maybe. But I just wanted to hear it. Sorry again. for oh, what? And I refuse to apologize. <laughs> Let's start the show. <laughs> Let's start the show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutforth. Yes. Hello. This week, we'll be talking about the real Frankenstein. What? Ooh. Yeah. No. As a Halloween, well, really. a Halloween special. It's a Halloween Yay. special. Have they done it? Have they done what? Oh God, no, no, not like, not like the real. Well, we have actually had an episode kind of like that. It was the undead pigs one. Yes, episode three. Yeah, undead pork. Yeah, so quite a while ago. No, uh, this is not about the real life Frankenstein. It's about someone who is spoken about as the inspiration for Frankenstein. Oh. Hmm. Also, didn't really do very much science, but I went fully into this episode, and I'm gonna do it anyway. Alchemy's a science, right? No. Yeah. Specifically, no. Yeah. Well, it sounds no. like a science. So, what do you all know about Frankenstein? Mary. Frankenstein is not actually what you think Frankenstein is. Frankenstein is the, the doctor, and Frankenstein's monster is the actual put together. Someone did A level God. English. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't actually. Australian level I, English. I watched Van Helsing. Ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did know that Frankenstein was the monster and not the doctor because I've seen young Frankenstein. Mm. Look, what have you watched to know that Frankenstein is the monster? No, the doctor, not the monster. I read the book. You read the book? Yes. Nerd. Well, I didn't choose to. Is it a book? <laughs> oh, you read it in English? Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Not in French. No. Oh, well, you might have done. I can't read French. Mary Shelley was French. Do you know that? No way. Nah, you didn't know it because she was English. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary Shelley is the least French name I've ever got. <laughs> I really hope someone didn't just stop right there and be like, oh, I've got something to do. But now I know that Mary Shelley is French. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to carry that on. So, um, yeah, do you know what happens in Frankenstein? Well, you should, Luke. I wouldn't expect no, you No, I've got the botched Van Helsing version. Don't trust me. Well, what happens in Van Helsing's Frankenstein? Well, um, Fr Frankenstein, as in the Doctor, works for Dracula. Um, and Dracula wants to create a monster to do something. I don't know. Terrorize a town. And so Dracula solicits Frankenstein to create Frankenstein's monster. But Frankenstein's monster escapes, ta uh, takes Frankenstein up a tower, which the villagers then burn because they don't like Frankenstein's monster. And then the doctor falls to his death and Frankenstein goes into, the Frankenstein's monster goes into hiding. Yeah, and then we cut forward like twenty years into the future. Oh, so this isn't even the. Yeah. This no, is just no, the start this is, of this is the li This is the beginning three minutes. Um, so that's a that's a that's a <laughs> that's a lot to go through in three minutes. It's a lot to go through in three minutes, and then we pick up like years later with Van Helsing, and he's uh, hunting Dracula, and Frankenstein's monster comes back. Good to know. There you go. Look what happens in Frankenstein, and then I'll tell you what happens in Alvin and the Chipmunks meet Frankenstein. <laughs> now I don't remember thing. Frankenstein that well. 
Um, but as far as I can remember, so, well, no, <laughs> no. Anyway, um, as far as I remember, Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein puts a bunch of body parts together, sort of sews them up and is trying to sort of breathe life into them using electricity um, and successfully does this. And then Frankenstein goes out and gets attacked by everyone. And it's very, sorry, Frankenstein's monster goes out and gets attacked by everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's very sad because Frankenstein didn't choose to be a monster. He just is one. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's deep, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. In Alvin and the Chipmunks uh, meet Frankenstein. That is not a thing, is it? Yes. Is it actually, is it a film? Yes. It's a great film. I've watched oh. it. I used to rent it from Blockbuster all the time. Oh my God. I'm not joking. Like every other, every week, really. So um, Alvin and the Chipmunks, they meet Frankenstein. Did they? Um, well, Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Um, and I think Alvin becomes some kind of Frankenstein's monster. Then they sing some cool songs together and then it's all wrapped up. Do they um, chop off all the limbs of all the chipmunks and then stitch them all together? And match them up to create one Franken monk, M Munkenstein. I feel like you don't get the vibe of Alvin and the Chipmunks, so I'm just going to move on and talk about the actual okay. Frankenstein okay. book. Yeah, I'm not familiar. <laughs> so, um, in the book, obviously, as Luke said, there's a sort of mad scientist. He makes a monster. The monster kills him, like Jamp said. Yeah. There we go. Everyone's contributing. Well um, yeah, you. go us. Uh, <laughs> and obviously people think that the monster is called Frankenstein uh, that's actually the doctor is called Frankenstein but actually it doesn't matter the monster wasn't given a name in the book so you can call him Frankenstein if you want if you think about it really he would be called Frankenstein because he is the creation of the, the, of the doctor yeah. you could be considered yeah, well, it's confusing to have child. two characters called Frankenstein no that's... but one's dead so it's fine uh, it's only confusing well, for a little still, bit yeah, they might have to reference the, the dead character well you say Dr. Frankenstein and then Frankenstein and the doctor yeah. Oh, yeah, call him Doc. Yeah. Cool, okay. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Real right. easy. Real easy. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, and another name. Do you know the sort of alternative um, name or the alternate name for... How I something something? You're thinking no, of I'm Doctor, thinking of Doctor Strange Strangelove. Love. Yeah, sorry. Uh, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bond. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. No. no. Oh. <laughs> um, this is... <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it Frankenstein's monster? No, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just thinking about those films being put together into one. Totally similar, though. Well, I think probably because era in which, in which the Frankenstein movie was made is similar to the uh, era of that movie. Probably. I was thinking because um, it makes me think of Young Frankenstein, which is kind of similar tonally to. Right. Yeah. Okay. So back onto actual Frankenstein. It's uh, Frankenstein um, or the modern Prometheus. Of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Published in 1818. Um, revised, I think, about uh, about 15 years later or so in the in the 30s. Uh, the 1830s, I should say. Um, <clears throat> Victor Frankenstein. He is a Swiss sort of uh, doctor um, who studies sort of like life sciences um, and, you know, makes a man from <laughs> corpses and shoots some electricity through him. And he comes to life and everyone thinks, man, he's ugly. We hate him. Uh, and then True. they try to kill him. And he gets all sad because he's easy, ugly, and he's like, "Oh, I don't like me either. I just want, just want someone to love." Oh, it's real sad. Isn't there a spin-off where Frankenstein gets like a Mrs. Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was yeah. going to say get laid. Yeah, well, he, so. yeah, he does. Yeah. I mean, he's evidently. I think. Do they have kids in Hotel Transylvania? No, I don't think the Franks have kids in Hotel Transylvania, mm. but. I assume Frankenstein would get laid at some point. Hotel Transylvania is canon, as we know. Well, it Absolutely. depends if Frankenstein canon. Victor Frankenstein gave Frankenstein a, a peenie. Well, you, it's a very well, specific I thing so. to have got. Well, it's, it's not if you've got all the other parts, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, but you're just trying to see if you can breathe life into a thing. You're not trying to make something that can necessarily breed. But I suppose it might need to pass urine, so yeah. yeah well, I'll just yeah. give him one anyway. Well, look, if I'm chopping up corpses, there's bound to be a few spare dicks lying around, you know? <laughs> So one or you two. spare everything really. yeah you've got yeah. a few right yeah, yeah. Not gonna, you know it's like, not like you're gonna run over your cup in fact your cup runneth over with penises surely right <laughs> like well assuming yeah assuming yeah. you're chopping up male bodies but yeah well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna mix and match am i 50 50 chance you know yeah well, <laughs> so, Fra so frankenstein's made exclusively of male body parts then <laughs> one would assume but it's not is that stated That's, i don't know if it is actually stated because you could get like female kidneys and heart and all the other female bits. organs yeah, yeah just had one boob yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> why not your cuff okay. clearly runneth over yeah, with boob yeah. as cory said i would put one boob on the butt because as we all oh. know boob and butt are 
the same, same thing. Oh, same yeah. thing. Two different size butt cheeks would be interesting. Just different types of milk. Yeah. One chalky. Oh. One no. <laughs> no. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, that is kind of the story of Frankenstein. Um, the monster is real sad and lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Not not lovely. Uh, bear in mind that was just the book, uh, sort, of, sort of the first sci-fi book, so it's relevant. It's relevant mm. to sci guys. Um, and then a bunch of films and all that been made. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about alchemy uh, before we get into talking about the real Doctor Frankenstein. Who I'm going to say this now. We, there's no real. There's not really any evidence that he's the real Frankenstein, but everyone loves saying it. So I thought uh, it'd be interesting okay, to talk yeah. about him anyway. What do you guys know about alchemy? It's like magic, isn't it? Is it what Nicholas Flamel studies in <clears throat> Harry Potter? Oh, is it the turning of metals into gold? Yes. Well, that's all what of those things are about? more or less oh, correct. In alchemy, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, you, you know, one of the goals of uh, of alchemy is turning base metals into gold. So mm. turning like lead into gold, uh, because obviously gold, real valuable. Yeah. Lead. Ugh. What are you gonna do with that? Kill Make yourself. Poison some people. Jesus. Well, man. you will. Like people died from it. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. True. Whereas I, I feel like what I would rather do is just um, make sure that a bunch of houses and toys are painted with it um, and lead to um, brain sort of brain damage in a, a lot of people and specifically not um, update houses and whatnot in certain areas where certain groups of people live so that there's brain damage in a certain population. Now, what kind of degree. wacky world would we have to live in for that to happen? No, no, just a silly idea. Just a I had. silly idea. Just a silly one. That was your idea. Yeah. yeah. It's really messed up, man. Yeah. yeah you know. Okay. So, <clears throat> alchemy. Uh, it's kind of, it, it's it's not really, it's not just magic. It's, it is kind of, it, it's pseudoscience, I would I would call it now. Like pseudochemistry. Yeah. And it's not, you could say protochemistry, but actually, we'll get to this in a sec. There's not a huge amount of evidence that alchemy sort of directly sort of pre, um, it was the direct sort of predecessor to chemistry. You know, there's there is alchemy and it was around for a long time, but mm. chemistry actually came from potentially other sources. But um, you know, there was alchemy kind of all over the world, India, China. Um, you've got the name alchemy come from the Latin, I, I think. Um, and that was uh, it, it's been around for a long, long time. It's kind of similar to chemistry. We think of it as being similar to chemistry because it works with chemicals, mm -hmm. although they wouldn't really think of it like that. They think of they, they think of things in very specific sort of um interesting ways there's a lot of uh there's a lot of we could do a whole episode on alchemy actually because it is really interesting it's just not science at all <laughs> whatsoever it did help with science to an extent in that we discovered some sort of uh chemicals and uh and we discovered different sort of chemicals and salts and whatnot through just mixing stuff together mm -hmm. in alchemy but uh yeah as i've said not not really a science in and of itself so how is it different from chemistry well chemistry follows um rules that actually work um no and alchemy the idea is that it, the idea for alchemy is kind of around transmutation um kind of turning one thing into another thing so turning sick people into well people for example um <laughs> turning like you know metals into gold other metals into gold um but chemically is it's going to key there because obviously we know that we can technically turn metals into gold by adding or removing protons from mm -hmm. the nucleus uh but, but we can we actually do it no well i mean like okay in the in the same way that you know you you can throw things together and they'll technically we could technically we could or technically we could in the future i i'm not a physicist i think we have the technology to do it right now but i think it's so prohibitively expensive that it is not worth making gold from lead <laughs> just buy gold just, just buy gold. Yeah, there's well, quite a lot. I mean, of it. oh god, I've got to buy my collider. Fucking hell, how much gold is that gonna? I'm gonna have to give away all my gold <laughs> just to make some more. You know, and then you got to buy the lead. It's not worth it. Just buy some gold, or take it from people. Okay, the old-fashioned way, like a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not entirely sure how alchemy differs from chemistry. So it, it is. It's kind of. It is sort of mystical. Um, it's it's not necessarily. Like, I I don't want to get too deep into it. The idea yeah. there there are lots of different ideas going around in alchemy. Like, um, gosh, how do I put it? The, the, you know, the sun and the moon come into it. it it's it's more spiritual than uh, than chemistry, right? Okay, it's kind of like astrology. 
Mm. You know, astrology is n- similar to astronomy, but it isn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, like yeah. it's in in the same way that you could say that uh, what's that fake medicine called? Homeopathy. Yeah, homeopathy is Sorry. like medicine. <laughs> right, I'm gonna upset some people there. <laughs> well, what? But by, by saying, by by saying, saying the truth. facts. Yeah. But it might be upset by that. Yeah, that's okay. I'll cry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, the heat's off you now. It's on me. Yeah. No. So, what homeopathy is to medicine, and what astrology is to astronomy, uh, alchemy kind of is to chemistry. Really. Um, the the idea is is you know you could you could make sort of the philosopher's stone as well you could make different sort of uh, I think it's panacea which is like a, a cure all a medicine that can literally cure any disease mm-hmm. so the idea isn't sort of like with chemistry you would think well a medicine that can cure any disease wouldn't necessarily be possible because chemically you'd need something that can um, interact with literally every possible disease yeah right so I get I suppose that's just poison. Oh, cures everything that, that would cure cures the everything disease, yeah, the, yeah the disease would cease yeah yeah as would you as would you just the best poison in the world so you know uh it's it's kind of beyond the scope of chemistry in that it it uses ideas that don't really fit into this, our sort of scientific model um the philosopher's stone for example yeah. is a sort of product of alchemy doesn't exist for anyone wondering and if you're american sorcerer's stone you're wrong it's actually philosopher's stone. That's true. That you are wrong. So the philosopher's stone is uh, the the sort of magical stone that can make you know the elixir of life uh, turn lead into gold, all of that stuff. Is the elixir of life a thing in alchemy? Yeah, in real al- like alchemy in our world. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, real and, alchemy. Well, yeah, this is funny. You know, the, the Harry Potter is actually nah, you know, no, no, no. it's fairly decent with its yeah. alchemy. You know, it's pretty spot on. It just so happens that it's all rubbish anyway. <laughs> No, but it's cool because sorry, um, sorry, do you call all fiction books rubbish? <laughs> no, all the alchemy, oh, alchemy is all rubbish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not all fiction books are rubbish. <laughs> well, they just are, the Harry I mean, Potter ones. They are all, <laughs> they are, by they all rubbish. A load of rubbish. <laughs> yeah, if you're just reading a thing saying this happened, no, it didn't. Um, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's what a load of rubbish. Petition to rename fiction to the the the, the load of rubbish section. Yeah, what, you get a book from the load of rubbish section. Do you think it's odd that there's fiction and non-fiction? Sorry, no, non-fiction is the real stuff, and we call it not not, not real we stuff. We call it not this. Not yeah. the one we like. But that's because fiction came first, I assume. We told stories before we told, like, facts. Well, I don't know, necessarily. You know? That's that's a hard yeah. one. Because yeah. the story, it's, it's kind of difficult, because the stories could be about facts. Do you know what I mean? As a way, a, a way of sort of conveying the facts. The pre- yeah, the problem like a message, like... but there's messages in fiction. As in, well, yeah, but uh, it, mm, I suppose fiction could have come first. Although, if you, I'm, I'm thinking of sort of, let's think of sort of like cave paintings, right? A lot of them are representations of sort of animals and stuff. I, I think apparently an idea is that they might have been sort of instructions or hunt this thing, do this to kill that, you know? That is so cool. It's cool, right? It's just no. so cool. And literally, we just lived in this giant multiplayer, massive multiplayer online game, and we just lift little little clues to each other, and we're like, uh, someone world. else will find that. Yeah. yeah okay. Look, I also like the idea that it's just people just painting stuff. It's just, oh, I saw a big thing. I'm going to make that on a wall. I think oh, that's yeah. less fun. Yeah, I think that's way cooler. Specifically for us. I think that's way cooler, because it's, it's, it means that art exists without a purpose. Mm. It's just, yeah. I just, I see a thing, and I'm like, I want to, uh, humans from like the very beginning have just wanted to be like, I want to make that thing but flat and on rock. Yeah, but I like the idea that the humans were leaving behind tips for other humans who they didn't know, because that's like the like one of the most altruistic things you could do. Uh, I think it might not have been for leaving behind. I never thought of it that way. When I so when I read that, I was like, oh, they were you know they were putting it up there to teach other people of their little group. But I like no, that's I what like, I mean. Like you just leave behind little tips, like like you're in like the Harry Potter PC game universe, and you type, just type Harry Super Jump, and <laughs> you'll go really far. Um, and then people you don't even know are Harry Super Jumping all over the place. It's like the internet. It's what we're doing with mm. the internet, where you know, you you go looking for tips about a game. Yeah, you're so. That's what we're doing with this right. podcast. But then you put a bunch of ads next to it, so it's not the same. Yeah. You don't know. Maybe the maybe there were ads on cave paintings. I know. Mid rolls. I know. Cave <laughs> you, know you, you start yeah. <laughs> <laughs> putting ads next to a bunch of useful information is like like um, doing a cave painting, 
but then also doing something that that isn't actually helpful for the person reading it, but that benefits you. Uh, and they get confused and they do all the things and some of them benefit you and some of them genuinely benefit themselves. Yeah. So yeah. hunt this animal. But when you hunt this animal, you absolutely have to leave half of it here. here. You have to go out and you have to leave it Nike to the trainers. gods. Yeah. Otherwise mm. you'll die. Otherwise the gods will smite you. Yeah. And no one wants to chance it. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that they would do in alchemy would be sort of mix metals. So they take mercury. They knew about mercury. And they would um, basically feed metals to mercury, trying to make new metals. How do they get all the metals there? By a truck. I was trying. I was running through my brain, thinking of what mercuries are there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Is there a?" I was like, "I was like, okay, God, Mercury, like, okay, right. good." Yeah. And then, oh. and then I was like, "Wait, Mercury as at the delivery service?" And I was like, "No, that's Hermes. <laughs> Same yeah, God, enough. different names." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Hmm, planet. Gotcha. gotcha. There you go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Why is that the third one?" Yeah. Actually, Earth's the third one. Anyway, uh, Mercury. You know how you can feed metals to Mercury? You, you must have seen that video recently of uh, Mercury eating gold. No. no what? I'm not, no. So Mercury is obviously a liquid. It's a liquid metal. But if you put sort of a thin sheet of gold into it, it forms a sort of, al like a sort of amalgam. Um, no, it just, the gold just sort of, it looks kind of like the gold is dissolving into the, mer the Mercury. Right. But kind of like it's being eaten by the Mercury. Oh. So we do, they would do stuff like that. What happens to the gold? Long. Does it react or does it just like... No, it, so it's forming like an amalgam, like a sort of alloy type thing. Oh, I see. So it does, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, that's not necessarily sort of reacting. Right. You know? But they become joined. They become yeah. one. Yeah. It's being digested. Sure. So why do you call it eating mercury rather than like sexing mercury when they become one? When two become one? Fornicating. That's not how sex works. Well, that's how it works in like pop. The, when like, you have sex with someone, you don't join up with them forever. No, but forever, you do. Apparently. Oh no, I'm trapped you inside do. of you. We are. We must now walk well, around together. But forever. when you eat something, you poo most of it out. So not necessarily. Does mercury poo out a bit of the gold? It depends. What it depends. What your Probably what parts of it. Point. Okay. No. Anyway, go right, take a little just... mercury poo. Gee, Jesus! It also does this to aluminium as well, which is why apparently you wow, can't have what a um, slut. mercury. <laughs> Thermometers on planes. It's around a bit. <laughs> well, in case the mercury thermometer eats the plane. Well, I I guess so. Yeah. Actually, I, hold on. Wait, no. Make I saw sure this you it, feed your thermometer yeah. before you take it on a plane. If you're watching this episode, fact check it. If you're listening as well, fact check this because I just remembered where I got that from, and it was a tweet from a scientist. Mm. Mm. Wow, mm. spreading fake news again, are we, Corey? Oh this is why we were taken off YouTube. <laughs> Censored. <laughs> it's not why we were taken off YouTube. We were taken off YouTube because. Anti-vaxxers ruin everything for everyone, mm. including me now. Mm. They finally got to me. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. I think so they got to you a while ago, Corey. Yeah. Oh no, those death threats meant nothing, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, obviously, uh, I spoke about um, alchemy kind of being the predecessor to science um, or to chemistry, and how that might not really be the case. So people will kind of say that, oh yeah, alchemy came before chemistry. And I kind of thought, oh yeah, alchemy was kind of, you know, the precursor to chemistry. But that's not necessarily true. Uh, when you kind of look into it, apparently medicine um, kind of led more into chemistry than alchemy did. Mm. Which makes sense because alchemy kind of relies on these specific sort of rules um, that don't really apply with chemistry. What alchemy did kind of do to some extent was give you more idea, a, a better idea of different chemicals that exist. So they've made new salts, they discovered new um, sort of compounds from alchemy. Because a lot of alchemy is just heating stuff for a long time together in a sort of crucible, you know, being like, oh, well, if we heat it for, if we heat it and cool it and heat it and cool it, then it will become something else. It's finding the exact right combination yeah. of metals and different things to turn something into um, gold or an elixir of life. You could uh, melt down animal bones and leather and all of and horns and all of this stuff. Um, Make Haribo. Yeah. Which is an elixir of life, is it not? Mm. In that it gives you calories, I guess. <laughs> yes, I suppose. So every food is an elixir of life. Except for poisonous ones. Except for, I wouldn't call poisonous things food. I think food has to at least add something to you. Poison is something. No. Mm. Well, mm, mm. sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, so um, that that's kind of the whole sort of view of alchemy. It's not really a science. It's mostly mixing stuff, heating stuff together, um, metals. And I mean, obviously it could be like, you know, like I said, animal 
parts or whatnot to try and get to elixirs that will cure illnesses or um, turn things into gold or you know basically if you've seen Full Metal Alchemist it's kind of like that the idea is to turn something into something else was mm -hmm. any of it successful in any way I mean they made some stuff but like not but was it were like any of the alchemy things did any of them cure any disease or at least help recovery from disease or one of, them, one their of the biggest th achievements one, one of the things we're going to talk about today was apparently used in some ways um less in curing disease and we'll, we'll find out soon we'll find okay. out actually towards the end okay. um so it's, hold on to that thought yeah i got him cool so i'm going to tell you about johan conrad dippel have you heard of him before <laughs> no i've not You've not heard of Johann Conrad Dippel? No, no, surprisingly not. Goodness me. No. So Johann Conrad Dippel was born in 1673, um, apparently, in Castle Frankenstein. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's near uh, Darmstadt in Germany. Um, oh, yeah, I've been there. Yeah? No. 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 You haven't been to Germany? No. 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 Why would you I'm lie? I'm just lying. Hey, you're spreading misinformation now. I am, sorry. Whoa. You're I'm doing what this, Corey does. This episode's going to get taken down. Someone please get in the comments. Get in the comments and tell don't no, don't tell them to take the after time. Um someone get in the comments and uh correct Jamp on that mistake he just made. Please, corrections. Jamp <laughs> has not been to Germany. <laughs> to be fair, Jamp's the main source for that. So if he says he's been to Germany, who can really refute that other than like the border agencies? <laughs> His passport, surely. His no. passport. Well, no, no, hold on. I have many. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> Passports don't remember that sort of stuff. No, no they don't. No. They've got no brains to remember. They remember what? if you go to Turkey, though, I went to Israel once um, <laughs> and I was I interrogated on the border about why I'd been to Turkey because there was a stamp for Turkey in my passport. <laughs> what? Why, why is that so funny? They remember when you've gone to Turkey. I've been to Israel once. <laughs> I went to Turkey yeah, no. on holiday and then I went to Israel for like a week. What? And um, yeah, because I, I went I to remember. Eurovision and didn't realize it was in Israel. <laughs> oh, oh my God, God, this story. Anyway, and they really like, they were like, why did you go to Turkey? I was like, what? Because I went on holiday? What? Because it's, you know, mm. they're worried about terrorism and stuff, apparently. Yeah, you you do have the, the standard profile of, you know, um, terrorist. what people think a terrorist well, is. But exactly, that's, but even if I don't, that's exactly why I would <laughs> be wearing this skin. Look, mm. put it this Sneak way. in, do some terror. If we're in the US, I'd be very worried about you. You know, a lonely guy right. keeps to himself. <laughs> Doesn't know, where complexion. Lonely. doesn't know where he is. Your complexion. Why am I lonely now? Outcast at school. No. The red oh. hair symbolizes fire. Right. Yeah, very explosion. much very much the kind of guy I'd be worried about. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, elsewhere in the world? Okay. Those are more kind of domestic terrorists. Right. Yeah? Yeah. You're not a, you're not a worldwide kind of man. I don't not know Mr. what is being said about me right now. I'm quite confused. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's about you. I'm making a comment on um Modern day America. Yeah. I would say. stop you at the border of Israel. Would you? Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. don't go in there, buddy. Yeah. Just, not even. Uh, I'd be like, yeah, don't go whoa, in there. Whoa. You don't want to come in. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I do just want to say to any of our followers who are listening in Israel that we're not making fun of the people of Israel. Um, we do have a problem, perhaps, with some of the things that the country itself is doing. I'm just saying this. But because... we also have a problem with some things our own country is doing. So. Oh, yeah. You know. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, no. Johann oh, Conrad Dibble, German. Dibble. Dibble. Is it Dibble? Dibble. Dibble. Yeah, Dibble. Dibble. Like a dimple dip, like without a, the M. Two P's. P P. P P E L. Dibble. Yes. So, e Conrad, Conrad Johann Dibble. Johann Conrad Dibble. Johann Conrad Dibble, uh, the German. Tell us all about that. <laughs> like, did he have a, a car? Place. I've yeah, I've never met a German. He was in. He was born in 1673, Luke. So he didn't have a car. Probably not. No. Why is that your first question? It's the Grease song. Tell us more. Tell us more. Like, uh, did he have a car? Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> right. Did he have a car? Did he have a car? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just the first, It's just how I I just judge everyone based on whether they've got a car or not. Have you got a car? Um. No, I got rid of my car. Wow. I'm well, car I care Australia. about the planet. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Beta male behavior. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, driving a hybrid is absolute beta male behavior, my friends. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it was a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Johann Conrad Dippel, um, you know, he was the son of um, another man named uh, Johann Dippel. 
different middle no name. No way. Oh, yeah, God, absolutely. That must be confusing. It's very con- especially when you're reading about them. I just I know because you got to read the middle names. It's, it's like a Frankenstein issue all over again. Exactly. Which one's the real one? Oh my God, maybe that's where Mary Shelley got it from. Uh, right from uh, Johann Dippel and exactly. his father exactly. Johann Dippel. Yeah, yeah, and which one of, one of them was a monster? But who was the true monster? Who was it? Is it Frankenstein? Which one was pieced together from a bunch of body parts? <laughs> we don't know. And the thing is, is that <laughs> Doctor Frankenstein. Ended up making a monster. I would say that potentially that makes Dr. Frankenstein a monster. Uh, so Dr. Frankenstein's dad, Frankenstein. Mm. So Dr. Frankenstein is actually fr- dad Frankenstein's monster. So it's actually Doc uh, Frankenstein's monster's monster. Frankenstein the monster is made a monster. A monster. You know, I would argue that um, Frankenstein's monster is not even a monster himself. Because what makes him monstrous? He thinks about... Uh, you know, philosophy. He reads. He knows of Paradise Lost. Yeah. No, he looks freaky. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What you know? What you know? Dig your own grave I there, my man. Don't mean to, <laughs> don't mean to judge. <laughs> <laughs> You're no. right. That is why he's called a. That monster. is why he's called the monster. Which is why Frankenstein really, is the yeah. true monster. Yeah. Because he made he made a man and thought, wow, he uggy. Um, gotta call him monster he now. He's quite an uggo. I went on Wikipedia to read the list of names that um, Frankenstein called him, and they are mean. It's like wretch, devil, oh. um, uh, so many. Think of every disgusting name that existed what? in the so 18, Why can't we just 1800s. get a normal name? Why can't we get like a John or something in there? It's well, a really normal name. Oh, what was the what was the name? I think wretch. No, not Reg. Wretch. Yeah, Reg. I said wretch. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying Reg. Reg. <laughs> but to be fair, monster. The definition of monster is a large, ugly, and frightening creature. Oh, so so you can't be monster offended. Monster doesn't mean like mo- the Frankenstein's monster is large, is subjectively not not pretty, and subjectively frightening. So it doesn't mean like a monster doesn't have to not like philosophy or literature. Monster just has to be big and scary, which you know. Frankenstein's monster kind of is big and scary. You know, I guess you're right. I, I have been taken in by stereotypes. I'm sorry to all monsters everywhere. And Dr. Mm. Frankenstein is not large, necessarily. I think he's large in um, his reputation. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then Donald Trump is a gigantic person. He's also a monster. He's large in oh. his aspirations. Oh, right? God. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Why was he? <laughs> Trump was the worst example you could have chosen. He's got a reputation. He's got a large reputation. He's also a large man. Yes. He has quite tiny hands, but quite large. Yeah. Normal size man. Normal hands, size hands, yeah. But a tall on a body. tall gigantic Maybe body. he's Frankenstein's monster. He's been made up of lots of different he, pieces and the hands they used were just particularly little hands. He, does, a, face so he does physically appear doesn't match quite the rest. incoherent. Yeah, like his body parts don't match each other. Yeah, he couldn't find a whole brain. He just pieced no. together like, you know, different parts of, you know, a bunch of the no, same yeah. parts of different brains. Anyway, we're bullying now. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but we are bullying. <laughs> we're, 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 Take him down for We're, we're not true. questioning him on his actions and his uh, yeah. views. We're just going, you look funny, which is, you know. Which is really, you know, that's the YouTube. lowest hanging fruit for yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we move on? Yeah, before we get taken down for harassment and bullying. Yeah, sure. As well as misinformation. So, um, as I've said, uh, Johann Conrad Dippel, he was born in Germany. Uh, he then he was, was born in Germany. He was born in Germany. He was born in oh Germany. Oh, my God. Damn. Anyway. And then he became a man. <laughs> he transitioned. From a country into a man. C2, CTM. <laughs> country. To Someone's man. like, Germany. And he's like, don't call me by my dead name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Deutschland. He was born in Germany. Um, and he was, quite, he was quite a bright guy. He went to study a, a, a sort of bunch of different things. He uh, studied at um, the University of... I think it's Geese, Geese, Geeseland. Geese? University Geese, of Geese. Geeseland. Geeseland. University of Geese. Uh, uh, <laughs> Teachers are all geese. All <laughs> no. the other students are geese. It's just him. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, oh, goodness me. I can't find the name of it. Um, he said <laughs> so he just made up Geeseland. University of Geese. Geesen. Okay. Geesen. Oh. Geesen. Geesen. German it. for Geeseland. No. <laughs> just... That sounds like the language geese speak. I speak uh. Geesen. <laughs> Reckon the geese. One <laughs> word. Honk. <laughs> Honk. Oh, no. It means everything. Honk. So <clears throat> many definitions. He got interested in alchemy uh, and he wanted to turn different um obviously different metals into gold. Um there was a point where he promised a bunch of people, um, oh yeah, yeah, I'll turn a bunch of I'll turn all this metal metal into gold. And then he didn't. Um and he owed them a lot of money. Oh dear. And I think he went into hiding. 
he did this a lot. He basically ran away from the places that he lived quite often, mm. um, and, which is why he moved around a bunch of different places and ended up at Castle Frankenstein, where he was doing a bunch of weird experiments. We'll get to that in just um, a little bit. He had a lot of issues with um, the church. Um, he, he would say things and they'd, they'd disagree with him and he'd go into hiding. As I said, does this a fair amount. He's he's not a he's not a very agreeable guy apparently, mm. um, which is kind of uh, apparently where the sort of idea of him being a mad scientist came from. And I'll say this again, despite what this episode is called, he is not the real Frankenstein. The real Frankenstein is the castle. It's not a misleading title. Um, uh... No, no. The, the thing is though, people do think he is the real Frankenstein. There's just not any evidence whatsoever to support it. Okay. Other than other than the fact that he was at Castle Frankenstein, he was around sort of, I think the same time ish um, as uh, the, sort of. Uh, I think you're shortly... spreading fake news again, Corey. No, he was around shortly before. Way. Look, all I'm saying is the MMR vaccine not safe. I'm just saying there are some people who say it, but there is no evidence to support it. That's but a... here's an episode of Psy Guys. So it's not no, so the the. the, the Right, the MMR vaccine, by the way, is yes, safe. Yes, it's very, absolutely safe. Very safe. Just to um, clarify. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, you, you, you get us YouTube. Some people think it's not, but that doesn't matter because, because they're wrong. They are wrong, and there is no evidence to support it. But lots of people say it, so we're talking about it. Yeah, we literally did an episode on that. That's true. Yeah. Until you, you, you took it down, you can't find it. Well, it might be up by now. Who knows? Mm. Uh, so. Uh, well, the, the thing is that uh, the reason I'm talking about him is because while there isn't any evidence that he was the inspiration for Frankenstein, he is an, it is kind of an interesting story, and a lot of people think that he is the inspiration. So may as well may as well talk about him. Yeah, and that leaves all the other inspirations for Frankenstein that may or may not actually be inspirations for Frankenstein mm. for future Halloweens, huh? Ooh, yeah, a yearly tradition, perhaps. Yeah, until we run out, at which case, at which point we will just I don't know start chopping up dead bodies and uh, put them together, live stream it. Mm. Yeah. Live action Frankenstein. <laughs> so, as I've said, he uh, sort of moved around a lot. Um, he discovered, I'd say discovered, uh, as far as I'm aware, the story was that he kind of accidentally created a new color. Or not as much a new color as a new dye. Um, so it was Berlin Blue. Um, have you heard of Berlin Blue before? No, I've not. I've heard of Berlin and I've heard of Blue. Is it Berlin Blue as in Berlin the place? Mm-hmm. Blue as in mm. the color. Mm. Yes. So it is named heard, after Berlin. Yes. I've ah. heard both of those individually, but not put together. Really? Yeah. Why Berlin? He was German. Ah. Um, so he actually made it, uh, the story I've heard is he made it by accident by mixing, uh, sort of mixing up. Um, he was working on his alchemy along with someone else that was doing their own thing. And they mixed up apparently their, their different sort of um, containers or whatever. Um, and they ended up making a blue dye that was um, sort of a true blue. Um, a very, very good blue. Mm-hmm. And it was used in a number of different things. Um, it was very, very popular. It was used in the um, the uniforms for the Prussian army, which is why you've probably not heard of Berlin Blue, because it became uh, known as Prussian Blue. Uh, Have you heard of Prussian Blue? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how, about, how about I try that question again? And one of you lies so that it sounds real cool. Okay. So you might not have heard of it as Berlin Blue. Because it was used for the oh, Prussian was it, army. Was it Prussian blue? What? Well, okay. Yeah. 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 Was yeah. It? You know about you know Prussian blue? Well, I just saw it coming when he started talking about. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah exactly. You, yeah. Have you heard of Prussian blue, Luke? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Mm. Well, you heard wow. it from me just now. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic Love, blue. That is my favorite blue. Yeah, it yeah, is really? my favorite blue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. now you know the history of your favorite blue. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I never looked into it? I never picked up on that. So as I said, it's a it's a blue dye. It's called Prussian blue now because it was used for the the army uniforms, but it's also used to. It was also used in uh, photography, blueprints, um, different inks. Is it the blue for blueprints? It was the blue for blueprints. Oh, yeah. I feel like I think a cooler name is Blueprints Blue. <laughs> blueprint Blue. I feel like that's sort of a, that feels like a circular name, doesn't it? Everyone knows yeah. Blueprint Blue. But I feel like yeah, that is a quite a good blue. Blueprint Blue. Yeah, it's a very good blue. It's a great blue. Yeah. They don't make blueprints in blue all that much anymore, do you? Do what they? do they make it in? I mean... Just paper. Like I'm normal. playing on a computer, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Right? I forgot we had those. I don't know. If I had blueprints given to me and they weren't blue, I'd be furious. Like, well, you've seen a... What did I get into this industry for? Well, what industry? The blueprint industry. The blue industry. The blue industry. <laughs> I just I work exclusively in things that are blue. I only deal in blues. <laughs> 
Sorry. Absolutes. Um, that is an yeah. that is an indigo. Okay, I'm yeah. not working with that. No way. No, absolutely not. So, um, like I said, he uh he made that sort of blue. He also made something else called Dipples Oil. Are you looking mm. up Prussian blue? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have, let's have a look at I Prussian just blue. To see it. Mm, that's not blue. Oh blue. no, it's not. It's darker than no, I imagined. That darker is, than blue. That is blue. what I imagined, though. I think that's a that's that that well there you go. That was the initial blue for blueprints. I don't think there is one blue for blueprints. Mm. I think they they're just blues. Yeah. No, but in all the movies I've watched, it's quite a quite a it's brighter, a light, it's like light, a lighter blue. blue. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think they're the same blue every single time. Well, mm. movies of light. Or I think they it could be it could be an, a sort of an illusion of sorts, um, something making the blue look brighter. The white. Mm, I yeah. don't think so. Or the light. Both of those things. That's the blueprints blue. Yeah, yeah that, that, it, that's a, that's an optical illusion. The white is just making it look brighter. It's closer to like Fortnite. I'm, ju- I'm joking. The that's Fortnite not. juice blue. That's like Prussian blue. Yeah, yeah, that's close to Prussian blue. Yeah. I think, again, yeah. I think there is not the single blueprint blue. Yeah, well, there should be. Standardize it. It should be standardized. Why, Why is it does not? government exist if not to standardize the blue of blueprints? Honestly, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. They work with different colors. Anyway, um, moving on. Dipple's oil. So, Where did he get the name from? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. I want to know the history of this name now. So I told you about alchemists melting down animal bones and hides and and horns and different parts of animals um, to try and make different things, right? Mm. Well, Dipple did this, oh. uh, and he made this sort of concoction that he uh, that he claimed could sort of uh, keep you alive forever. Well, not forever. I think he said till a hun- mm. to the age of 135, um, it could heal you. It could um, sort of, it could exercise demons. Apparently, oh, it could do um, a number of different things. Quite the claim. It was this sort of black tar-like looking oil. Um, he actually gave it to someone, um, and two years later, they died. Um, mm. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Related to it, or no? I mean, no. not necessarily, but of, unrelated. They hit by a is, car. Unrelated. Causes. If the thing is supposed to keep you alive. <laughs> Like, you know, for a long time, and yes. you die two years later. Uh, it didn't mm. actively kill them, it just didn't keep them alive. I mean, it could have. It's not necessarily. It's not poisonous, but it's not. No. Could could be be what if it was like carcinogenic? That'd be really funny. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> so, um, there's there's an interesting story that I've heard about this um, stuff called Dipples, like I said, Dipples Oil, um, in that apparently in World War II, um, they would use it or something similar to uh, put in wells. To stop the enemy from being able to drink from wells. Oh, why would that stop the enemy drinking from the oh, wells? Oh, I should have mentioned this. It tasted and smelled absolutely abhorrent. Oh, I thought it just meant it was like poison or something. Oh no, it's not poisonous because ah. that would be against the Geneva Convention. It's no. it's technically chemical warfare. Yeah, kind of, but also it's not deadly. It just smells and tastes real bad. Rank. And so they would not drink the water and but, they'd get mm, dehydrated. That also stops you being able to drink the water. You go oh, to their, in the enemy's would, wells. Yeah, enemy's wells. Okay, yeah. right. Not just your own wells in case they... Specifically yeah. not your own wells. Yeah. 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 You stuck up so. on water, boys. <laughs> poison in the well. Put in dipples oil in the well. <laughs> Put in okay. dipples oil in the well. So now we filled up all of our wells with, with, with poison. Um, Well, not with poison. Now we filled up all our wells with dipples oil. Now we just need to wait for the enemy to take us over and they'll be <laughs> ever so thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and another thing that um kind of comes up. So you you, you can kind of get the, you get this picture of him being sort of a mad scientist here, or one would hope that you get a picture of him being a mad scientist here. Are you? Mm. Well, not too mad. I'm getting a picture of him being just not that good at it. Yeah, well, he was very intelligent and quite good at. He was well respected. He was thrown in prison for a few years, and I think the Queen of Denmark asked for him to be released, sort of um specifically. I he mean, was... because he's doing alchemy. Mm. Yeah, but he was very smart. Um, right. He sure. was. He was very. He, he was also a doctor as well. He went and studied medicine, became a doctor. Um, you know. So and that's and apparently. Apparently, he was working with um, corpses. Um, there's not really much sort of contemporary evidence for this. It seems that like a lot of this came up afterwards. But he did write. You know, while he was alive, um, that he thought that you could transfer a soul from one body to another using a funnel. <laughs> a funnel. I have no more information. A funnel from where? I don't know. I mean, the, the butt, I guess. Why or the mouth. How would the soul funnel be work? in the butt? Well, it's, it's not in the butt, but like... You How does it shake actually transfer, it come out. A soul's affected by gravity. I How would it actually transfer through the funnel? It's souls... You can make up any explanation you want. And that's, that's perfectly fine. So why don't you tell yeah. me? 
Yeah, Jem. Um, soles have little tiny flippers on the end, and they just kick their way through the air. But they're non-physical. Yeah, not not to, not on our plane of existence. On some plane of existence, they're physical. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Physical yeah. is this plane of existence. There could be another physical You'd plane of existence. You'd be terrible at making up excuses for things. No. Okay, look, yeah. why don't you tell us I'm how souls work then? I don't think they do. <laughs> making it up, Luke. Please. Yes. Okay, why is the soul in the butt? Uh, it's the warmest place. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> and souls love warm. They love warm. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So if you put a tube up the butt, and then you put a tube up another butt, the soul is just like, but you have to warm up the other butt. So it's, it's like even osmosis. warmer. Mm. The, the soul is like, well, that's even oh. warmer of a butt. So I'm going over there. You have to make a warmer butt. Okay, that's yeah. much better yeah. than flippers. But you need the tube. Otherwise, the soul might get lost on the way and will get cold on the way. Yeah. So you warm up the whole tube too. So that the whole tube needs to be warm. a heated tube. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Thank you. Good to know. Um, so yeah. Much better. <laughs> Well so he had this idea um, to use a funnel to transfer a soul from one corpse to another. So there, there are some ideas that you know he was thinking that sort of Frankenstein um, creating life from um, what is not life. You know. Yes. So um, as I said, uh, he had quite, he had quite an odd life. Um, you know, uh, he's like I said, he made that um, sort of blue kind of by accident. It seems not necessarily fully on purpose um basically just by mixing different uh, sort of ingredients together um uh apparently he it was sort of made in 1704 uh but they didn't report it in the literature until 1711 so seven years he sat on that on that prussian blue till he gave it to the world um as i said he um went uh, and became a doctor um like so he's a full act like a, a full actual doctor um, along with being an alchemist. So it, it, it's interesting that he was kind of working with science, um, like specifically with his sort of medicine and then also with alchemy. Because uh, the view of it then was kind of, um, it wasn't, there wasn't quite a strict line, I guess, mm. as there is now. I mean, interestingly, I think it wasn't until much later than you'd think, I think maybe the, the 18th, 19th century, that... Um, it was sort of fully prov proven that you can't chemically create gold from other metals, essentially. Mm. Other sort of, um, like, ele uh, elemental metals. Yeah. But you can. Not chemically. Right, okay. Yeah. Squish them. <laughs> yeah. Squish them. Well, it depends how hard you squish, I suppose. And that's because they're, it, because it's an element. Yeah, because, because it's yeah. an element. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, e so you know, even, apparently, even, uh, like, uh, Isaac Newton um, had, like, worked... On some alchemy, like in, in a certain science, in a sort of scientific way, to see whether these ideas could work or not. So even at that sort of time, um, it wasn't necessarily um, there wasn't such a it wasn't so sort of looked down upon by science as it is today. Mm. Um, wherein, if you go to a, a sort of say a science convention and say, "Yeah, I, I do a little bit of alchemy every now and then," they're going to look at you like you're uh, talking about astrology. Mm. You know? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So Dipper was born in 1673 and as I said died in 1734. I just want to tell you a little bit of a story about his death because apparently people think he might have been poisoned with his <gasps> own Dipple's wow. oil. Well, no, because it's not poisonous. Okay. Just no. real not just tasty. Let you live. No, no, yeah, it just doesn't make you live. And interesting, yeah. I think interestingly not long after he um sort of said, "Oh, this Dipple, I've got that uh, it might not have been Dipple's oil, it might have been something else." Um but he said, "I've got this elixir that will extend my life to 135 years. Yeah, I can live 135 years old." He died um about a year or two later after uh -huh. proclaiming this. At 137. Wow. <laughs> that oil. How did he even do better it? than he thought it was? <laughs> By the way, 135 years is a very specific claim. I was thinking, because yeah, he's never right? done it. He's not done it yet. How does he know? It's like he's making it up. I don't know. Maybe there's some maths involved. What, like the age of the zebra I put it in, multiplied by the age of the dog I melted, <laughs> is the age you will live to. How old was he when he claimed They're this? They're very young animals, right? Yeah. They're yeah. very young yeah. animals. Yeah. Yeah. There's more life in them. <laughs> Like it's lamb. <laughs> That's why I only eat veal. Yeah. And caviar, actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. And eggs, obviously. <laughs> eggs. Obviously. God. Egg. Them, they've got the most life. They're not yeah. even born yet. Exactly. So That's much life. Wow. That's so sad. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> well, it depends <laughs> when you get them. 
<laughs> what stage? So, 1673 till 1734 is when he lived. Um, and, yeah, so he died, um, obviously, um, what was that, sort of uh, 61, 61 years? Yeah, 61 years old. Wow. Um, and Didn't so, even make it halfway. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. A lot of contemporaries um, I've thought... I've lost my oil. <laughs> no, oh, no, I've run out. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, so a lot of contemporaries thought that he was poisoned, but um, apparently he died of something like uh, a stroke. Um, we probably think it, 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 was, it was probably a stroke, um, but it's quite a bit earlier um, than his than his projected death date of eighteen oh eight. So maybe mm. maybe he was poisoned. Maybe that's maybe they knew. Oh wow, he's gonna live so long. No, he's Let's too powerful. Him. We need to get him. Exactly. It's too long to be claiming state benefits. Yeah. Dipple's oil can't state protect against poison. Um How's <laughs> your pension last that long? <laughs> yeah, so um it, what what, what so, uh, there's there's really few sources on him, but one of the really good ones I found on PubMed actually it said um it says this specifically. Um but many who knew him declared him to have been poisoned. This indicates, if nothing more, the conditions under which he lived and the dangers which threatened him throughout his life. Like I said, he was a bit of a mad scientist. He didn't like, you know, he was fleeing different places every now and then, mostly because yeah. he was pissing people off. Um, yeah. So the fact that he, everyone thinks he might have been poisoned, you know, at the time, just gives you a better idea of the kind okay. of guy he is. Not too out of the possible, like out of the realms of possibility if he's pissing loads of people off. Yeah. Because like, have you ever been in hiding? Well, like a couple times, but well, yeah, exactly. a couple times. Not, yeah. Yeah. We've all been there. He also went to jail for seven years. You know, okay. As I mentioned, you know, right. and then the Queen got him out. He yeah, he was a very the Queen Seven got years. him. Out. I told you this, the Queen of Denmark. Yeah, he was the Queen of Denmark. No, 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 no. the Queen, no, the of, queen Denmark of Denmark got him out. Got him out. Right, okay. of jail. I told you he what? was the Queen of Denmark. Wait, why? We didn't question that too hard. Did she? She loved that oil man. She just, she, did she know she just, him? She yeah, she must have done. She just specifically mm. requested to get him out. As I said, there's it's very difficult to find sources on this guy. Uh, I mean, one of the sources I had to look at, uh, which you'll find in the, in the description, is was written by a student um about him all the stuff there luckily corroborates with elsewhere yeah but it's very difficult finding sources on this guy because really all people care about is that he seems yeah. to be the the sort of inspiration for frankenstein um she and can't, she can't like him too much if it took her seven years to get him out well maybe she that's forgotten. how much dipples oil she had left <laughs> oh queens could be very right. busy gem i don't know but if your oh, queen's friend is in prison well, it could be an acquaintance right. Yeah, I feel like for a queen, getting someone out of jail is you know such an it's like such an easy thing. It's not something you know that mm. you you only do for your friends. I'll get around to it. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, oh, who was that guy that I ran into? I met him, met him a while ago. I wonder what he's up to now. You check in on him. Yeah, he's in jail. You're like, it's like she asked the butler. She was like, oh, where's that dipple guy? <laughs> I haven't I haven't heard from him in a while. Oh, he's in prison. Mm. Madam. Oh, 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 oh I should get, get him out. Oh, yeah. I should I should get around to getting him out, shouldn't mm. I? Yes. You know. Maybe two Sundays from now. Yeah, yeah. busy this week. Yeah. Um, yeah so, um, he, as I said, uh, there was the last thing I was going to say to you. It was him being the inspiration um, for Frankenstein. He obviously lived in Castle Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, he was born there and he lived there for a period afterwards. Um, and Mary Shelley apparently uh, took a trip to a place near Castle Frankenstein um, and would have heard apparently the people there could have heard the people there. The crazy scientists yeah. living in Ca Castle Frankenstein. Oh. Yeah, I there is it. there is a single I think a single source um, saying that she went to a place that was near the place that he lived, and so potentially could have been told stories of the crazy scientist that lived there. Cool. That is That's about as, me. <laughs> it's yeah, a very scientific that. proof right there. It's a very spurious connection. Nope. Uh, and there's also no yeah. evidence from Mary Shelley ever talking about it, this guy. So. I fully do not believe that he's the the inspiration for Frankenstein, but I thought he was an interesting enough guy, you know, making his dipples oil, um, trying to be an alchemist, all of that stuff, going in and out of jail. So I thought I'd tell you about him. And that is it for today's episode. That was very good. I'm so glad we learned about the real Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. We'll get back to the science next week, won't we? Mm, and uh, we'll get Mary Shelley to court because she's clearly stolen the life of a man. <laughs> get her on the pod. Jump. um... You can sort that one out, okay. right? I'll, yeah. I'll leave my alone. Yeah, you... she got an agent. <laughs> <laughs> so now that the episode is more or less, you know, come to its conclusion, I feel like it's time for a quick fire quiz. It's a quick fire quiz round. Bum 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 bum. Halloween edition. 
Oh dear, oh, that was long. So the quick fire quiz is the same as every single week. I ask one question, one question with the two of you, the first person to buzz in with the correct answer after I finished asking the question. Wins, what do they win, Jemp? Um, a Halloween goodie bag. Halloween cheer. Yeah. I don't have a single bag here. Oh, you have me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what are your buzzers first off? Luke, what is your buzzer? <laughs> Hundreds of volts traveling through mm. Frankenstein. Fantastic. It's a monster. Yeah, very good. <laughs> oh, even better. Jam- it's like the real thing. <laughs> what is your buzzer? <laughs> it's alive! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. So, <clears throat> my question for you both is, what was the initial name for Prussian Blue? Oh, I- it's alive! <laughs> it. It's alive! <laughs> Look, I think that was... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think kay. that was you. Only because... You had an easier buzzer to get at quicker. Yeah. I think you thought of it at the same time. Yeah, Jem had to like, take a breath first. Yeah, yeah uh, it was Berlin Blue. That was it. Ding ding ding! That is hell oh, yeah! yeah. I've well done. For weeks. This is so exciting. Thank you to my parents it's, and to Rebecca house, yeah. and to all of my friends. Oh my god! Please let it end. Here is your Halloween cheer. Oh, go on Woo! Then. There it is. I just gave it that to wasn't you. A cheer. No, I'm not cheering for you. It's the you know like Halloween spirit. Your Halloween oh. cheer. Okay. Mm. Okay. You don't well, seem very full of Halloween cheer, Luke. I'm no. not. Well, no. well, maybe I am. Maybe this is the Halloween cheer. <laughs> so it should make you I feel generally worse. Generally, about as cheery as Halloween <laughs> does. Yeah. Well, that's pretty spooky. We hope you all have a fantastic Halloween or had a fantastic Halloween. Depending on whether they're on YouTube or the podcast app. Well, if they're on YouTube, you hope they had a great, fan, great well, Halloween. We hope they're having a great Halloween because it comes right, out on yeah. Halloween. But if they're listening on a podcast app, Halloween is yesterday. What well, if they're watching so, on YouTube, but not when it first came out? Well, then we also wish that you had a good Halloween. If, basically, if you're watching, if you're watching the premiere, we hope you have like, we hope you're having a good Halloween. But well, if they're you're not watching having a good on, Halloween, if they're wait. watching a podcast, no, on no, no, Halloween. no, 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 I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Happy Hanukkah. Before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producers Ashley Miller and Finn TZ. And also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment. You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can find a god that does it. SciGuys pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube is where we are right now. Or you can find us at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or send us an email. Send us an email at sagaspod at gmail.com. That's sagaspod at gmail.com. Sagaspod at gmail.com. You can follow me at not Corey everywhere. You can follow me at Jumpkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>